Emma, tell me the pause for this one. Play with it, play with it, touch it, work it, you can date it, if you like it, you can name it, touch it, work it. Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Your girl Emma is back with some puffy sleeves and a new video. Today we're going to be talking about some simple tips and tricks on how to look good in every photo. We all know how uncomfortable and awkward it can be getting in front of the camera, but having some go-to poses and just some simple tips and tricks about lighting and angles can make you feel so much more comfortable and can also change the way you look at yourself. So today I'm gonna to take you behind the scenes on two photo shoots. The first one is a street style shoot uh, that I shot with a friend of mine and the second one is for a lingerie brand called Rosa Mazzorio, hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, shot with a photographer in a hotel in London. Point number one, working those angles. I never actually stand straight onto a camera, very rarely. Generally, if I wanna look taller as well and leaner and more elongated, then I angle my body 45 degrees and put one of my legs closest to the camera so it looks really long. This just looks so much better than standing straight on, which is just really unflattering. Moving on to the next point is creating shape. So, I always have this in my mind when I'm having my photograph taken, like how I can move my body to kind of create different shapes and just work those angles. Obviously the hand on the hip is a classic. What I like about putting my hand on my hip is you obviously you show the waistline, whereas if you have it down, you don't really show that. You can hide it a little bit, but if you put it here, you can see the curve that you wanna create. And also what I like about doing the hand on the hip or just in general having the arms away from the body is that if you have the arm close to your body, it kind of squishes it a little bit. Same like with your legs, if you have your legs sitting down or something, they just look a little bit larger than they really are. But putting, tilting it away from the camera as opposed to close up, just always away, separate it from your body so it doesn't look larger than it is. Also, when I'm having my photograph taken, I always think about my core, like keeping my stomach tensed a little bit. I always pop my hip out. If you tilt your pelvis in, it's definitely not flattering on camera. It gives you the wrong proportions. But if you stick your butt out a little bit, pop your hip and lean forward a little bit, it's just so much more flattering on the body. But this works whether you have an hourglass figure or not. It's about creating that illusion, you know, of curve and shape. And whether you have a more boyish figure, more muscular, or you have a really hourglass, more curvaceous figure, you know, own it because there's nothing more sexy, nothing that looks more confident than owning your body shape. And when you do that, it will just look so much better in the photo. Also, the angle of the camera is very important. If you shoot from below, you will generally make the subject much taller, elongated, and personally, it's actually my go-to and my favorite shot is from slightly below. Of course, the opposite, if you shoot from above, you make the subject look much smaller. So find an angle that works with you and experiment a little bit. Next point is lighting. It's one of the most important points. It can be the make or break of a good photo. So you really have to avoid shadow on the face. It's not flattering. And to get the maximum amount of light, you have to tilt your head towards the sun and to the light. You're engaging your neck and getting that good light to hit your face. So I'm gonna show you an example of when I'm standing in the shadow as opposed to the light. You can see my whole face is dark. However, if I come into the light, I've got the gorgeous sun hitting my face. Also, sometimes it can be quite cool to play with shadows. For example, when I was taking this photo, I used my hand to kind of create some shadow on my face. It was also quite practical because I was squinting. I couldn't see anything. Play around, shadow is great. I think it looks really artsy in the photo and can look really cool as well. So depending where I am, I tend to use the environment around me. So sometimes, for example, I like to lean against a wall or a window ledge, whatever I can find. I might sit down if there's some steps. I sit with the sitting down shot. I try and move around quite a lot, you know, experimenting, seeing what works. If I want to look taller and longer, again, I just put one of my legs closest towards the camera and outstretch it. I pop the hip a little bit to create a curve. But if I want something more relaxed and cool and effortless, I'll put my arm on one of my knees. So it depends the vibe you're going for. Another one I love to do is use props. Props make things just look more real. And honestly, they give me something to do with my hands. That's what makes me feel more comfortable. So whether I'm holding a teacup, whether I'm taking off my sunglasses and holding my sunglasses, or holding a fruit platter at breakfast, 
you know, something that makes the photo look more real and make it come to life. Sometimes if you're stuck in a pose or it just looks a little bit static, to create some movement, sometimes even like a hair flick can work really well. So here Gavin is trying to shoot me where I'm doing the hair flick. So he counts me down, he's like three, two, one, and then I do the hair flick and he grabs the photo. Try and get things in sync with your photographer, that really helps. I also like over the shoulder, so I kind of look back like, oh, did you just take my picture? <laughs> so candid. <laughs> Moving on to the candid shot, everyone likes a candid photograph, something that looks like you didn't know the camera was there. So looking away is really popular. You'll see a lot of bloggers, Instagrammers, Insta models doing this. And I just think if you don't feel that comfortable looking into the camera, looking away, looking into the distance, like you've seen something, or you're looking for someone, you're eyeing up the dessert table, <laughs> Uh, whatever, just something that makes you look like you've just taken this photo in the moment. One that I often use is like the head tilt. So for example, here I have a window and have light. So I'd like put my head up, elongate the neck and put it up like that. I think also like for example, when I do the head tilt, I open my mouth slightly as well. I really try and relax my mouth because you can tell when I'm nervous or uncomfortable because the mouth is like, and it just doesn't look relaxed. Just like relax the jaw, relax the mouth, you know, and play with your angles of your face and have different facial expressions. Like smiling. And I think it's really important to use the eyes as well. So when you smile, you're not just smiling with your mouth like this. But as Tyra Banks says, you've got to smile. So you smile with your eyes. The facial expressions, you know, vary it up. Maybe you want to have a more moody photograph. Think about in your mind different adjectives to describe how you want your photo. So do you want it playful? Do you want it sexy? Do you want it moody? Do you want to have it dark? Like, what's the vibe? Oh yeah, I have to tell you about Irina's go-to pose, I've noticed. Personally, I go for the more relaxed, like, head tilt, but she goes for the, like, Zoolander pose. A little bit more intense, but we you know, whatever works for you. <laughs> also, most people, actors, actresses, models have a preferred side of their face. Have a look yourself, maybe you prefer one side to the other and of course be aware of that and then make sure that's where you're angling your face. I never ever really take a headshot front on. I always like give a bit of an angle. I just think it looks much better. I feel like the face doesn't look as flat. It just gives a bit more definition to like your cheekbones and jawline and neck. Most importantly, be yourself. You're already beautiful. We just want to make that beauty really shine and radiate. You know what? Even if you don't get it right, it's okay. Sometimes the best shots are those like outtakes, the goofy ones, the ones where you mess up. And now with Instagram having the carousel, it's just really nice to have a few like maybe of the professional ones and then a couple that are like the funny, cheesy, goofy ones. Life isn't Instagram. Life isn't about posed photographs. It's about being real and being yourself. So that's it for today's video guys. Some of my top tips and tricks on how to look good in photos. I really hope they helped you. If you used any of these poses in some of your Instagram photos, then just tag me at Emma Miller. If there's any ones that I missed out, you can let me know in the comments below. I love reading and replying to you guys. If you like this kind of video, please do give it a big thumbs up so I need to make more of them. I'm thinking about doing more of these kind of photo series videos, maybe talking about locations, how I edit my photos, maybe also go into videography and show you how I make my YouTube videos. So let me know guys if that interests you. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit that subscribe button below so you don't miss out. I'll see you soon. Bye. Play with a